So we're now in 2024. We already got some weeks into the year as well. And I already have a trip planned coming up pretty soon. And for this trip, I really have to decide which gear to bring because I'm quite limited to weight. And this makes for a good opportunity to share which action cameras and which drones I will be bringing on this trip. Usually when I go on these yearly trips, I end up taking too much gear and I'm not using half of it. So because of the limitation of my next flight, I have to decide which gear to bring and not. So in today's video, I will run you through what type of camera devices, action cameras and drones I will be using going forward in 2024. So first up is of course gonna be the Mini 4 Pro. This is a must have drone and I already made a video on this and my thoughts on this as a travel drone and whether or not I can recommend it. So make sure to check out that video down in the description below. And this has all the features from the bigger drones squeezed into this small form factor and has a weight of only 249 grams. It's also extremely silent compared to the bigger drones. So you're not gonna get as much attention with this as you would if you were flying the Mavic 3 Pro, for example. And as a content creator, we also have features like active track waypoints and cruise control which only going to make it easier to capture content in different ways whether you travel alone or by company so this is a must have drone for me as a content creator because it has those features that i can take advantage of when i travel solo now talking about the next one that is of course going to be my beloved insta 360x3 and this was my most used action slash 360 camera last year and it has become a must-have camera for all my trips whether i go on a motorcycle or travel by plane or just do a day trip what i really like about it is the versatility and ease of use for some the learning curve might be a bit steeper but if there's one camera it's worth learning how to use it would be this one. You will have so much more fun using this than any other action camera. And because it shoots 360 videos, I don't really have to think about anything once I press the record. I can hold it in different positions to create different perspectives and then later just go back into the editing software, whether this is the studio app or mobile app, and then just reframe the video as I want. And I've also been taking this on multiple trips to Hawaii and all over the place here in Norway. And despite the lenses being slightly more exposed than other regular action cameras, I've never actually scratched or damaged the lens. But if you're unsure of whether or not the activity you're going to do is bringing a higher risk of damaging the lenses, you can also get these lens protectors, which will add that additional safety. And like I said, the biggest advantage with the X3 is that you don't have to think about anything. It records everything around you without having to frame every shot, which is amazing, especially if you want to capture everything at once. But the X3 might not be your main camera. And honestly, I don't think it should be either. But to have it as a part of your travel setup and combine the use between the X3 and something like the Action 4 or the Pocket 3, for example, will give you the ability to capture more footage regardless of the activity you're doing. And that brings us over to the next one, which is the Pocket 3. This is something I've been using a lot here at home with the kids. Unfortunately, it has been snowing and raining every other week, so I haven't really been able to shoot as much as I wanted. But my favorite thing with the Osmo Pocket 3 is of course gonna be the one inch sensor and the image quality coming from this. It looks amazing, especially when you also have that shallow depth of field. And with the D-Log M10 bit color profile, it's also easier to match the footage coming from the Mini 4 Pro. So these two really complement each other and makes the color matching much easier when I work with clips from both of these cameras in the same video. And the two inch touchscreen makes it easy to see what's being recorded. So it's much easier to frame your shots using the Pocket 3 over something like the Pocket 2. And just like the Mini 4 Pro, it also has that amazing active track. This has active track uh, 6.0, which is amazing. I have a full review of the Pocket 3, link down below if you wanna check my honest opinion about this, but the active track is amazing. So you basically have this small pocket vlog setup, which you can easily put in your pocket, backpack or shoulder bag, and because it has that one inch sensor, you can use this as your cinema camera when you're out doing a day trip, for example, or travel to a different destination, which means you don't have to carry around a huge camera setup like the Sony a7S III. And with the shallow depth of field you get with the Pocket 3, including the showcase mode, you can use this as your main studio setup as well as your travel camera. So that brings us over to the next one, which is the DJI Mic 2. Unfortunately for me, I only have this one microphone, which came with the Pocket 3, but if you're 
you're a solo content creator, this is more than enough to capture those nature sounds, wave sounds, and just do normal vlogs. But I'm actually thinking about getting another one of these, just the single transmitter here, but in white color. So in case I want to switch it up when I'm making a video, depending on the shirt that I'm wearing, I have the option to choose between black and white. And the mic too does also have 32 bit float and internal recording. So you don't need to have this connected to any other camera for that matter. You can just use it as a standalone microphone if you want to do that. And the 32 bit float makes the audio sound amazing and prevents clipping even when you get those high tones. Now, the last one up is a bit tricky. It stands between the Go 3, the Ace Pro and the Action 4. These are all cameras I love using and I will most likely end up using all three cameras this year. So for the Action 4, for example, it has that durability and the amazing battery life and a convenient battery case as well for traveling. And it also has that seamless connection with the DJI Mic 2. And there's also that D-Log M10 bit color profile, which goes back to the Pocket 3 and the Mini 4 Pro. So using all these in one of the same video makes the whole process much easier. And the 4K image quality coming from the one over 1.3 inch CMOS sensor looks amazing. So the Action 4 will mostly be the camera that I use when I plan on making videos with the Pocket 3 and the DJI Mini 4 Pro because everything is the same ecosystem. So the color grading and the matching of the footage is gonna be so much easier. So that's the reason why the Action 4 is coming with me uh, this year as well because it has you know the seamless connection and the seamless workflow with these other devices. The Go 3 will always be my favorite hiking and family camera because it's such a small device. Look at this, it is the size of my thumb here and that's one of the reasons I love this so much. And I think the image quality coming from the Go 3 looks amazing. You have to record your videos in the flat color profile though and you have to do some uh, changes to the settings. You want the bit rate to be high and you also want the uh, sharpness to be low. I wouldn't say medium, some people are going with medium but I prefer to do that additional sharpening in post because in post you will have more control over the sharpening and you don't want the camera to decide and digitally uh, sharpen your image. So low on the settings and the, the bit rate on high, shooting 2.7K uh, at uh, 30 FPS, you know, that's everything that I do with this camera and I just love the quality coming from it and how convenient it is. It is the world's smallest action camera. You can mount it anywhere and it's extremely light at only, is it 35 grams or 32 grams? But yeah, that's one of the reasons or the main reason this is coming with me, everything. And we also have the action pod so you can frame everything. It is the perfect travel camera in my opinion. But again, if you want to have that better image quality and if you want to show some stunning visual uh, videos, depending on where you travel or what, what you want to do, uh, you know, you have to opt in for a bigger uh, and, and better camera like the Action 4 or the Ace Pro. So that brings us over to the last one here, which is the Ace Pro. And this is what I consider the best low light camera on the market. Uh, and it's a little bit hard to decide which of these two are the better low light uh, camera, but I'm not gonna compare that because they are two completely different cameras. This is waterproof. It has AI, has a flip screen. You can use it, you know, dive with it. You can, it's so durable, but if you drop this, it won't, you know, it won't crack. But if you drop this, it will most likely crack. And this also has a mechanical uh, gimbal, which stabilizes the footage. And this has internal image stabilization. So it's two, completely different cameras. That's why I'm not going to compare them. They have two different use cases. So the Pocket 3 is going to be that cinematic travel vlogging camera, which brings you this amazing quality. And the quality of the Ace Pro is probably going to go a little bit down. Uh, in my opinion, I still think the Pocket 3 has the best overall image quality out of any handheld uh, action cameras or camera devices, which is, uh, you know, a pocket size, but you're still going to get amazing image quality with the Ace Pro and it's such a durable uh, action camera uh, and it has that flip screen so you can vlog with this. So if I am doing a lot of water activities and I want to frame myself better uh, and uh, that also includes low light footage, I would probably get the Ace Pro because it has that low light and it also has that free frame which
which I love so I can shoot in free frame and then I can adjust the aspect later so I can get one of the same video exported in uh, vertical, horizontal and uh, any other aspects really and then upload to different social media platforms which is one of the favorite things that I love about Insta360 that they have this free frame mode. I'm still waiting for the winter season to end here. It's been all crazy this year uh, and I really want to get more out of the Ace Pro and get back on my motorcycle for example and really test this but for now everything is all white and slushy around here so there's not really the best time of the year to shoot videos but I'll definitely bring this with me on my next trip which is coming up pretty soon so make sure to hit that subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss out on that video. So there you have a rundown of the camera gear that I will be taking with me on this trip and use going forward in 2024. There will be a dedicated review to all these uh, devices down in the description below which I recommend checking out if you want to learn more about any of these specific cameras and if you found any value in today's video let me know by dropping a like down below and also if you're brand new to this channel make sure to hit that subscribe button so that's everything for today's video really hope that you enjoyed it so again thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one bye bye